Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here this year of a new campaign in the Thousand Week Reich, in which we're playing as the Krasnoyarsk Soviet government led by a certain uh, hat-wearing, Soviet-loving Grigory Zukov, but Russia's truest son alone in the cold. Broken after a terrible defeat after the Reich ran over the mother Russia, we had to resort to various methods to survive the cruel years that we were yet to come, or yet to face. Fleeing from Beria's wrath, Marshal Zukov traveled many kilometers until 1950. He arrived in a desolate Siberian desert that lacked the sun to provide hope that seemed a farther and farther reality. Her only most loyal sons only believed that she could be saved from all the difficulties that have arisen, such as the two of them who rebelled against us, isolation from the outside world, and the factionalization of the political scene. We are alone in the dark, without anyone's help, and friends in this dark hour. When you lose every trace of hope and faith that anything will change, life can surprise you in one way or another, making at least moments easier. We received a radio report that several groups of soldiers were quite close to the border, fleeing from various disgusting hands that grabbed the Union by the neck and broke him mercilessly like a beast. We have to do something about it because the lives of our comrades are at stake. We can't just leave them in the Siberian desert without any supplies. We have to save them. The state of the government. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, under the leadership of Barry, who tried to demote Grand Marshal Zhukov and Konstantin Rokosovsky, Following a wave of supporters who rejected Beria's regime, a large number of people decided to follow in Zukov's footsteps, and finally arrived in Krasnoyarsk in 1950, where Zukov formed Krasnoyarsk as a militaristic state while Kolnev remained in union. Rokosovsky and Zdanov in Novosibirsk, after ceasefire was achieved, which created de facto areas of control, which they hold now. In the cold heart of Siberia, Zukov always considered the idea of returning to the old union in all its glory, but there were factors in front of him that made the path more difficult. The two insurgents added a significant amount of damage to Zukov's re reconstitution of forces in order to start the process of the union's complaint. Now the union is facing a big problem of an internal nature that threatens it, and Zukov has devised a plan to achieve that, although though through direct control. But will this union last long enough to fulfill its aspirations? Only time will tell. In which we have the national spirits, members of the second union, we have a limping army, we have the Red Marshals, the Marshals Red Army. We also have a Red Army political factionalism, which sucks. And we have the Tuvan insurgency, which is really, really bad. Not good. Alone in the coldness of Siberia, though. Some time has passed since the Tuvans decided to start a revolt against the government of Krasnoyarsk, terrorizing its territory with ruthless clashes with the Red Army. Day by day, their actions in Krasnoyarsk are spiraling out of control and threatening our population while the army can do nothing about it. We sit and wait for a miracle to happen that does not come in any aspect of our lives here, but rots away slowly while our enemy, whom we previously considered a friend, devours and swallows us, killing us slowly. Are we left with more solutions to the Tuvan problem? No one can give a definite answer anymore. No one even knows if there is a solution, but it might just endure another effing day without someone killing him. Just like when we lost a whole group of 200 soldiers who found themselves in conflict with the Tuvans. Help us if you can, because we are losing strength to endure this fight. My sweet lord, help us. More loathsome al Our more loathsome allies address military factions. Let's do this one first. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe we can't. No. I would deal with insurgency just because I want that extra political power, but our more loathsome allies. When you are left with no choice, you have to work with those resources that you currently have. This is what our situation looked like when we arrived in Krasnorsk in 1950, encountering politicians who had already settled here as well as Tuvans who had promised us support. To survive, we had to decide to work with them because we had no other options. Also, I forgot to do this too, but whatever. It's not like we can really do much about it. So. Uh, resources, resources, resources. Cool. And there you go, just in case. Double check, occupation policies. Um, what do we have here? Probably the lights. Yeah, use the lights, because these guys... Um, cool. These guys actually have anti-tank, go to artillery, stuff like that. Cool, the death of Zidanov. Marshal Zukov sat pensively in his chair, looking at the wall with the map of the Soviet Union from 1939. It gave him the sentiment sentimentality he needed during the day when he felt a heavy stone in his heart because of the disappearance of his country for which he fought, for which he loved. <clears throat> and then lost again. Suddenly he heard the energetic pounding of a fist on the door to turn around and say, You are free to enter. We do not put up barricades. Almost. Then a soldier rushed inside. Zukov did not know who it was. I apologize for the coming in like this. They told me just to hurry when delivering this dispatch. The soldier told him, handing him the letter that had just arrived. What is this about? I don't know. Marshal, I was just told to bring you this letter. Thank you and you are free. Zukov told him as the soldier left the office. Then he noticed the title of this letter, which brought him a sadness in his heart that he had not felt before. This news was wonderful. This news brought something he certainly did not expect, and something he thought would never happen. Drink and aneurysm, drunken booty. Zukov shouted after banging his fist on the table with the pleasure to continue reading the letter, which brought more and more beautiful news. Zidana died. He was no longer alive, and that filled Zukov's aged heart with joy and the will to live that he had not felt before. 
I finally waited for you to get to know the ugly side of alcohol, you filthy creature. Then he sat down on the table and went into the direction of the window to breathe fresh air. Standing by the window, he saw hope that he would get some new nose, something that would further improve this hopeless situation because when hope runs out on the other front, your front gets better from that point of view, and now Zukov was on that first front, and Sidonov was on the other. Take the shot, you drunk F, and arm your defectors. Uh, through the deep snow and darkness, I swallowed everything in front of them. Twenty trucks managed to deal with the relentless weather to escape from Beria and his disgusting appearance. Despair was stronger than the human ability to survive such harsh conditions, but a brave group of people managed to break through despite all conditions, thinking that they would never see the light of, light of life again. A part of the Red Army came to them, which was sent after they received an order from the command staff to save them and take them to safety. Through del delirium, caused by extremely cold weather and lack of supplies, they managed to make a small smile that filled their hearts because they knew they no longer had to worry salvation came, helping them settle down they headed together to Krasnoyarsk, where the new future was waiting for everything, maybe not the most beautiful one, but it was certainly better than having Beria determine how long they will live. Refugees from Beria's wasteland? Nice. They're only light up a tree, but whatever. The 14 combat, which is okay. These guys are our garrisons, which is not good. And then we have 17 combat, which is relatively decent. You know, could be better, but not too bad. Ivan Serov's little NKVD. So Ivan Serov has various abilities that can be of great importance to us in establishing control in Krasnoyarsk. From an ordinary peasant to politicians or terrorists from the Tufan ranks, what we need now precisely is what Ivan Serov needs is his toy with which he will play in our favor. Eliminating all threats that appear in front of our path. We give our political power, lose a Marxist Leninist drift. Knife of the betrayal, because right now we're socialists, Zukovists. We have social democrats, we got a lot of people here as well, so or a lot of groups. Marxist Leninists, huh? Knife of the betrayals. Marshal Zukov sat alone in his office, le leaning over the table, wondering what he had to do next, because he was left without allies day by day, slowly losing their support. A memory rushed through his head that he that could not leave him, refusing to believe that he had extended a hand of friendship to the Tuvans to build a new future together, only to eventually turn against him as if they were the blood enemy uh, they needed. Cut off the neck as relentlessly as possible, he put down his notebook, looking out the windows he heard the new shots open just a few miles from his residence, when will this end more? Zukov said quietly and desperately, looking at new lives to be lost and senseless struggles with each other instead of turning all resources towards rebuilding the state and seizing burial. This is how it should happen. It seems that I will never see the unification of Russia, never again. Hide the pain, Marshal. Hide the pain. <clears throat> so now we can do this one. Vastly expand it. It's an unethical choice. Could lead to consequences later on. Alright. Aggressive pacification patrols. Versus token increases. It's not bad. It seems like it would increase our control, which is probably what we want to do. Versus give Seraph only the bare minimum, which doesn't look like it's going to help us out much. And it seems like... This is a way to get cooed or have worse things happen, so we'll do token increases to Serov's resources. We must not allow Serov to have too many places for rest and independent activities in Krasnoyars, because that can hit us hard on the head if we allow it. Therefore, we've decided to make a slight combination between the time we have activities and a mediocre budget, which in the long run will be a far greater benefit than spending everything we have now. Only time will, only time will help us put an end to the Tuvan crisis, as befit the human morality that has run out of us since the Soviet Union fell into disrepair. Computing good. Research speed. Thank you. The fire which had turned red, composed of about a hundred men. The two ones looked in the new direction of a military base that was fast asleep, except for a few guards who were posted to guard the entrance. They were divided into several groups so that they could invade from all sides until the Red Army guards had no basic doubts for what might happen. Less than ten minutes passed when Burst woke everyone present inside the military base and caught them in a raid. The battle didn't happen. Only occasional shots paralyzed a guard, which is a very interesting way for a person to say that they were killed in the first strike. The two ones made their way to the barracks, where the confused and surprised soldiers found themselves, where they met another apartment of weapons. The two ones occupied this base in just half an hour from the initial attack as they took care to secure their positions, preparing everything they had as an equipment for pyromania. The two ones distributed fuel around the base, carefully measuring that everything would catch fire. Then the fireworks happened. Throwing a small flaming spark that came in contact with the gasoline, the fire began to spread to the military base, swallowing everything in front of it. Reaching the room with explosives. There was a huge explosion that took everything with it, drawing in <clears throat> everything and throwing it around. Marshal Zukov talked on the phone with Kostigin about some basic things within the government to hear someone knocking at his door. Who knows how many times? You're free to enter, Zukov said, continuing to talk with Kostigin. Valor set the letter down to the table, following Z Zukov's hand pointing to the table, which he did. Valor then went outside as Zukov picked up the letter and reading it while talking to Kostigin. It's a deep regret that we must inform the Marshal that we have had an incident at a local military base. According to the basic evidence we were able to find, we have reasonable suspicions that the Tuvans took part in this action, which took the lives of our soldiers who found themselves in a military base that suffered enormous damage in the explosion that allegedly followed the battle. He did not even manage to read the letter until the end when he threw the telephone receiver against the wall out of rage, remembering all the previous incidents that he had with the Tuvans, and how they had to fight them even when that fight was in vain. Kostigin looked confusedly at the phone at the other end of the phone, not knowing what had just happened as Zukov got up angrily from his chair and looked around the office with a tired look. <clears throat> when will this stop from happening? And of course we'll do that one, of course. 
and ooh, hydrogen bomb, Norwegian thaw, Spanish Moroccan conflict, all really fun stuff. And that token increases. We get more political power, we get more popularity of socialism, Zukov's control will slightly increase, and more political power is nice. Ivan Serov was accompanied by two guards who led him through the corridors of Zukov's residence. At first, he did not know why he was invited to come here, but he still decided to accept the invitation. He didn't speak, <clears throat> but he just walked past the guards until they reached the office door. The guards knocked to hear Zukov's uh, voice say softly, Forward. <clears throat> the guards then opened the door and let Serov in, closing it behind him. Good afternoon, Marshal. To whom should I thank for this indica indication often? Serov, uh, Serov spoke as Zukov finished something in his notebook to turn to him. You should thank me for being here on my initiative. Then how am I supposed to understand this if I may know? You know very well what kind of service I need from you. Serov made a short smile, but he didn't really reveal himself too much because he did not want Zukov to notice his happiness, did it? He needed the secret police, am I right? As hard as it was for me to say, it was one way or another, yes, that's exactly what I need. But in one condition, speak. I know that you marshals will keep everything in your hands, but I want at least a little kind of autonomy, so I can do my job smoothly. To allow himself to be threatened by the two in threat and trust nowhere, he had to accept this. Then, then, I think we've agreed on this. Thank you for your trust, marshal. And I think that trust will cost me dearly at, at the end of the day. Probably. Setting the NKVD's legal limits. What separates us from the leaders in the East and the West is the fact that we still have humanity in our hearts. If not for the formation of the NKVD, then at least for the actions of the territory of Krasnoyarsk. To stand in the way of the two-thing threat, we have to give them just a little space to think that what we're doing is nothing more than just to jump them like a snake to its prey out of nowhere and tear it apart with strong blows on the concrete. To prevent two from knowing what we're doing, we'll organize a political act in which all humane, inhumane methods proposed by Ivan Serap will be condemned to end this crisis as soon as possible. <clears throat> Bought over the slow burn through the Altai. Over time, our methods have become increasingly effective in resolving this crisis. Through a series of minor battles with the Tuvan rebels, we managed to capture several of their soldiers and forget about them, which led to the reports from the Altai region that their rebellion was losing more and more support from among the people. This is the perfect opportunity for us to force one of their prisoners and secret escort of our army soldiers to convince their leaders that it's time to stop the rebellion and stop losing more and more soldiers who don't have reserves, nor the people to support them in recruitment. Nice. More days and then Amnesty talks with the Tuvans. They agree to peace. The NKVD in Crest is in a weird state of limbo, with their counterparts in Perm being corrupted. The NKVD must reform, these reforms must be made to serve a regime. A new court system. And that's just the established Soviet. So, well, political power isn't super, super, super important here, so. A new court system. Amnesty talks with the Tuvans. We face success. Our fight against the Tuvan Revolt has finally come to an end, and we can breathe a sigh of relief with a sigh of eternal peace. Our biggest enemy in domestic politics, terrorism, has finally come to an end. Negotiations begin with the Tuvan Rebels, which we hope to be able to end, if not quickly, then for sure. I should play Jordan and Iraq sometime. Sounds like fun. Cool. And when's the next one done? Eight days. Not bad. Get more up, please. Decide elected, of course. And what do we have here? Aggressive Assaulter? Yes, he is. As well as Offensive Doctrine, too. A beleaguered envoy. The vehicle stopped in front of Zukov's residence. There was a Tuvan who's in it, who arrived by the order of the Tuvan command headquarters to finally start negotiation on a truce between the Red Army and Krasnoyarsk and the Tuvan revolt, which suffered more and more defeats as time went on. Just formally, he stepped across the entrance to the uh, residence to be immediately greeted in the hallway by Marshal Zukov. Reaching out to greet them warmly, they headed for the office. Marshal, I'm glad to see you, you as much as you think of me. Uh, the only thing I'm glad about in the situation is that you finally agreed to negotiation, Zukov said briefly with a pause to the Tuvan. The delegate agreed with him. You're right, Marshal. I'd just like to talk about it if you don't mind. That's no problem. Feel free to say what you want. Six hours passed in this conversation, which Zukov's proposal to start negotiations would end. The Tuvan revolt was finally accepted. Peace was always an option. Well, okay. Hmm. Germany wins EFC? All right. Well, whatever. Disappointing, but that's all right. The little NKVD. Korean protest crush. Amnesty talks, of course. And then it looks like we're about to go addressing the military's factions. Well, one of our biggest enemies in Krasnorsk is politics in itself, because we are facing factionalism of unprecedented proportions, which threatens to drag us to the bottom of the ocean in oblivion. We must keep our state in harmonious unity, because if, they get, if we cannot control it ourselves, then who will be able to? Well, we will pay attention to the problems caused by factionalism by opening negotiations with the factions that are the main actors of the political scene, while at the same time we deal with propaganda that will serve us very well. The unity of the state and its independence depends on it. More political power, stability, war support, more social strip, and even more stability. Not bad. Tuvans agreed to peace. And one of the largest cells in the capital across Norris, Tuvan rebels gathered who led this revolt all this time with Zukov's people. The meeting passed without any indi 
incidents on both sides and what was required to be fulfilled to achieve final peace and oppose any problems for Zukov. Agreeing to Tuvan's conditions to provide amnesty and unhindered residence to all troops, as well as membership in the ICPS as a Tuvan section, Zukov and the rebels finally put their signatures on paper and thus ended this bloody fairy tale that took many lives for nothing. Peace of mind, peace of, for the body, for eternal peace. Nice. We gotta do both sides, do we? Zetsev's traditional socialist, because this one increase our control, versus this one which will increase, which will decrease our control, huh? Factionalization is a big problem that we have to fight resolutely with. The fact is that we cannot stop them more easily by banning or using similar methods, but we can keep them under control if we choose our side carefully. Traditionalists are full of different ideas that they've managed to combine into one ideology, but is that combination that effective when it's created that way? We must not ask too many questions because we must save Russia. Zetsev may be sure, or maybe our sure win because we are afraid that we are only at a loss with others. Alright, not bad. PPS elected, not bad. More research speed, yes. Promises of, pre promises of peace, no, we're okay. So we'll go to this side. Traditional socialist. What are you going to do about this one? Please go over to it. Actually, I, I might still read these ones, but I definitely won't be doing this one, so. Traditional unification plan. During a meeting behind the members of the sniper clique, Zetsiev handed us a plan that he considered perhaps the only solution to this chaos called Krasnoyarsk. His plan proposed to put an end of the opposition party of social democrats, i.e. plural nationalists, to achieve an end of factionalism, which is destroying a country day by day, month by month, without any sign that it will ever get better. If this is the only choice we have, then simply we have no choice but to take that paper and sign it. So there's this one. And then with the plural, plural, plural nation unification plan, of course. And there's this one too, which we're not going to be able to read, so it is what it is. Traditional Socialists. After shaking hands with Zidanev, Zatsyev left the office after a successful meeting aimed at signing cooperation between the two sides. He went out with his friend while they were talking about how this agreement would bring significant benefits to Krasnoyarsk and Russia so that the topic of conversation would move to the other side. It's been a long time since we agreed on something, hasn't it? Zatsyev spoke as his friend nodded. When did it come? Uh, two years ago? Or when did they come? Yes, uh, like yesterday when I remember that. Almost like time flew by in the icy desert. Uh, I agree with you. It's just a little weird for me remembering all that, you know? How did Zidanev kick us out? Exactly. I dream of those cold nights when we were dying of cold and hunger just to get somewhere where we can be on, on our own. Where we can calm down and create something that will last. May I tell you my honest opinion of that? Sure. I think I knew, I think we just found it. I think it's already here and we just need to accept this and keep doing it. You'd be right, my friend. Maybe you're right. I've gone down to the crossroads, fell on my knees to find a better future. The Red Army, protected by God? Or contact us, guys. Let's do this one first. The Red Army was created with God's help. Everyone has been trying to deny it since its inception. But we're aware of its divine origin. She has the strength and will to oppose almost everyone who presents her with a problem, both in one way or another. If we could do, if we could indoctrinate soldiers to fight for both motherland and God, we might be able to achieve the fact that they fight even harder than they have done so far, while providing the will and endurance to resist attacks from all sides. I don't think I played as China yet and actually lost the Vietnam War. Have I? Maybe I have. I can't remember. I don't mind improving working conditions too, but early mobilization. Actually, the Dutch government, pretty normal. Hey, we actually have a city looking. City working. Revolution in Bulgaria, very nice, very nice. And there we go. Contacting your supporters in Novosibirsk. Although we are alone in the desert full of ice that has no end, we can rely on a few, if not only one, of our friends who is currently in Novosibirsk. With certain contacts that can lead us to a certain help that can fulfill our spaces in empty warehouses that are so eagerly waiting to have weapons in them. It will later, of course, be used in a just fight for Mother Russia. <clears throat> more going to be very nice to get slightly more manpower, but they get less stability. Okay. And they get more... Ooh. Research bonus for other two weapons. Prioritize the motorized core. I do want to make sure we're doing okay. Motorized equipment is not bad, but we'll be trying to using APCs eventually. Because we do have two tank divisions. The West African transition, huh? It's earning. A coup and perm. Oh, boy. Who got cooed? Barry. I have played as Barry. Oh, nobody. Emergency committee, huh? All right. Prioritize an infantry corps. There will never be too many soldiers in their training to succeed in our holy mission called Saving Russia. If we can redirect resources from our budget in the production of infantry weapons and training of a new generation of soldiers, then we will be able to regain what we've lost in previous decades at all loved ones, homeland, and everything we live for. If we do not do something about it, we will be left without this quasi-homeland in Krasnoyarsk, which provided us with salvation for the new future ahead of us. Let's not gamble on them, shall we? Oh. Well, I guess there goes those French people. Council of Sahara, huh? Trying to accord the course. The homie. Well, there goes the French. 
going on down here? Free Central Africa, huh? <coughs> What's, uh... What are they doing in the good old... Oh, he's very aggressive. Our dear allies. The convoys arrived one after another while the others... While the controllers made sure that nothing was damaged during this process. The weapons were nearly packed in neat boxes. With the number of which was about 20 for the weapons themselves. While one large box was reserved for the company equipment. The artillery they ordered arrived one after the, the other. in large trailers pulling it from all from Nervous Abyss. The truck driver came out to meet the control. He had an order from a couple weeks ago. Everything is neatly packed just to be taken to the capital and handed over to the local authorities. Can we take a look if it's not a problem? Of course, you know, if you don't have any problems. The controller headed with his colleagues in the direction of the trailer entrance. After the driver opened the door, the controller went inside, checking if everything was in order and if there was any danger hidden inside these boxes. It's clean, he shouted after the inspection went smoothly. It's okay, you can move on. We understand the driver who led the convoy replied to get back in his truck and continue his journey to the capital. Open the gates of the capital and prioritize the motorized core. Well, I'd like to do that, but we didn't do the left side yet, so. It is what it is. Infantry, infantry, infantry. Less organization? I don't like that. So, expand the Crescent factories first. Our military complexes seriously demand that attention be paid to them because they contain so much potential for further production of weapons that we simply cannot without looking at and rearranging the complex according to the needs of our production. To succeed in this intention, which will manage to lift us from a, our broken knees, we will start with the expansion of the existing factories that are in our hands and are operational. That will be our primary goal, of course, for now. And then get a lot of decryption and such like that. Actually, how are we doing on guns? Yeah, no, let's get some... We're seizing guns from 1936, which is pretty honestly pretty darn bad. Train for now. Uh, if we're going to do anything, we're going to push into this side because the supplies better over here. And they only have militia. We should be able to do relatively okay and just take them all out. Unisec government of Brezhnev, which I do want to play with Brezhnev eventually sometime too, but we'll see what happens. A sniper clique. This is to secure the most loyal generals for our armies. We must look in our backyard because our closest friends and associates are the best allies in the short term, at least. At best. Two generals stand out from everyone, and it will not be difficult to, to convince them to join us in our fight for a new traditionalist Russia that we all, all strive for, and that we all love. Marshal's Red Army. Hmm, that sucks. We're just going to lose that anyways. Okay. I think more stability might not be too bad. Can we do anything here? Uh, that's not bad. Construction speed, 50% is not bad. I kind of want to do all this stuff, though. Yes, yeah, it seems, seems a little... Hmm, honestly? 50% construction speed compared to this stuff is not bad. I do want to get to partial mobilization for some. That is what we want. Infantry equipment, arms, of course. Minus 15% is not bad either. Refound it, huh? Perm. It's not bad. Minus 20%. Less reliability. Honestly, this one's not bad. 20% more soft stack, more reliability, though. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. But smuggling in our outdated armor. As the production continues at a slow pace, our need for further equipment continues to grow. To fill our warehouses at the top, we will have to resort to desperate methods and try to find obsolete pieces of armor brigades as well as main battle tanks. They are discarded some scrap metal landfill. If we can find a few broken ones, it would be extremely helpful in understanding and adapting our armor brigades, which will come in handy as training for everyone, from mechanics to tankers. He's over here doing what? Suka, Zelasov, Konev. Also, Chuikov actually led the way. Alright. Not bad. I do want to place them as well. Our factory of the land. I'm not perfectly going to war them. Generals of the clique. Seeing it at an empty table. Ivan Sedorenko and Abdulkazizid Derzov arrived here at the direct invitation of Zatsyev, who asked him to join him at the meeting. Without explaining the details that could lead to knowing what would be discussed here and with which the direction he could turn to the meeting to. You know about this, perhaps. Idrisov just shook his head when they heard footsteps approaching. It was Zatsyev who was trading with the heavy footsteps. Heavy steps. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. You're probably wondering why you're here. Of course, we ask. I'd like to talk to you quickly if that's no problem. Of course. I want to do this, uh, ours. Uh, the Red Army needs a fresh blood to lead it, and I know you two long enough to realize that you two are the best option for me to make the choice if you know what I mean. In translation, you want to be generals of the Red Army? Uh, yeah, so what is your answer to the question? Looking at each other, they had to agree. As Sir Zatsyev conducted them to the procedure, this formality was finally completed. Thank you for your trust and willingness. And beginning the Great Unification War. It's time to do it. We must do something about the destroyed Soviet Union, which is sinking into increasing chaos day by day, from which there is no return. Our army is more ready than ever. We managed to establish stability in the country, and we solve the issue of political factionalization, which also threatened us. Now we can finally turn to bring the Soviet Union into what has always been meant to be. Heaven on Earth, with God's help. Long live Mother Russia. If you go to war with them for three years, we get more speed. Attack and defense, which is pretty nice, actually. And you guys will just go straight on in if possible. Uh, what's the equipment like? Do we have any spare? No, no, no. Okay. Hmm. What do we have down here? Novikov? No, not bad. 
We have uh, Moninesko. We have Malinovsky. All right. Not bad. More attack. I like that. And we have Zukov, who's not bad either. Big Daddy's dead. Goodbye, Big Daddy. Ooh. Oh, crap. Which one do we want to do? Combine operations. Asymmetric warfare is not bad. It's really not bad. This one is so strong. It's ridiculous. 15%. 15, just 15 more entrenchment. And then you get 10 over here. Defense. Offense is not bad. Defense is pretty good too. Plus 5. You get 15 if you go this way as well. So you get more defense and organization for everybody and more max planning. Soft stack is okay. Um, this might do really well for us since we're going to be using tanks anyways. Manpower is not going to be an issue. Minus 20% consumption though. Uh, it's pretty strong. I always choose a middle one. I don't want to choose a middle one this for this time. No matter how good it is, so. Here, land. I, let's go on to the side. It's a strategic theorem. More max entrenchment, more planning speed, more max planning is always very, very, very nice to have. So now more max planning is up to 40%, which is pretty nice. Oh, we have a tank. Oh, look at that. It's not very good. It's well covered with. We're not making any battle tanks, anyways. Honestly, I want to delete this division. Hmm, we'll see. French Revolution, alright. And attempting to locate Rokosovsky versus this one. We need to own all of Novosibirsk. Huh. Well, we're not going to war with Novosibirsk. Not yet. Oh, wait, no. We go, Oh, no, no. We go to war with. Oh, we do go to war with Novosibirsk. I thought we were going to go war with these guys. I looked at that earlier, and we do go to war with these guys. Okay, that's interesting. That's different. Okay. Good enough. Okay, I'm glad I looked at that. Once all of those go out, meeting with the Plural National Committee. The actualization is a big problem that we have to fight resolutely with our best forces. The fact is that we cannot stop them more easily by banning or using similar methods. But keep them under control, we choose our side carefully. Plural Nationals under Andrei Vashinsky are an option we must accept if we want our government and politics to stop collapsing like an endless avalanche. We'll put an end to the division that turns our views towards further development that until we can launch larger militaristic actions in Siberia. Until then, our mainstay is Vyshinsky and the committee. Reunification with Novosibirsk? A major diplomatic message from Vaznesinsky, leader of the Novosibirsk government, has arrived at the desk of Zukov. In it, he offers to the two to join forces and unify against the shared threat of the Prem government in return for amnesty and a high-ranking role in the new shared army, army government. Vaznesinsky proposes that their two states unify under nominal leadership to improve their chances of reunifying the Soviet Union. Zukov, of course, is not naive enough to trust Vosnesensky immediately, and is hesitant to give up the independence of the Krasnoyarsk government and his power over it. No doubt such a move would improve both their chances of defeating their mutual enemies. You'll join forces? Can't trust him, since technically we're already at war with them. So, yeah, how about no? A coup in Hungary. Oh boy, and generally overall here, we're doing relatively okay. Right now we're trying to cut these guys off of here as much as possible. So, we'll see what happens as they are trying to attack us. Help shore up the line, you know, supply... Of slight supply issues, you know, the good stuff. The normally good stuff. And they're still beating us here, which is not good, but I wonder if we just, like, do, like, force oh, defense, why not? PPS 43 is good. Some stuff right there, too. Awesome, awesome. Got some plus. Nice, nice, nice. You're not allowed to lose. There we go. Oh boy. Well, at least this group hasn't been encircled first, which is good. Meeting with the Plural National Committee. Go ahead. By Vyshinsky. Two are the quarters in which the committee sat at this regular session, seeking some sort of entertainment. He looked at the windows occasionally and paid attention to the way the snow was falling. He paused for a moment, feeling as if there had been or he'd seen something. But he wasn't quite sure what he was looking at. Whether he was drunk or not, it seemed to him that in the distance he could see a group of people breaking through the thick layers of snow, tirelessly moving towards their goal, but no one was there. Vyshensky saw before him a hallucination that reminded him of the time when he came to Krasnoyarsk, moving with all his political comrades. A Pole by birth, he joined the committee to later become their leader, leading all the people who hated Beria from the bottom of their souls anywhere, only that they no longer had to suffer his terror. The road led them through the harsh landscapes of central Siberia, where they reached Novosibirsk hungry and sparsely supply, but then he laughed through the pain, briefly letting out air out of his mouth to realize that Novosibirsk was full of Stalinists, or just a maldashid Beria. The fear of their repercussion was greater than their ability to survive the journey. They had to keep going, they had to do something to survive, and they had to continue their journey until almost all dead. They reached the... Uh, Borders of Krasnoyarsk, where Marshal Zukov received them. He woke them up from his. They, he then, 
Then he woke up from his daydream. He realized that he could not see anything that and it was just one of his illusions he had. The trauma he was going through. He was feeling cold. He had to go somewhere to warm up. He remembered in which direction he was going. A meeting with Zukov's people was to be held because he decided to accept his ideas and members as full-fledged actors of the political scene. Now, he can at least partially amuse himself with what his goal was to save Rush from the onslaught of evil. Getting in tune for meeting straight and narrow. And which now we've got to continue just beating up uh, the nobles of BS people and uh, have a good time. Very good. Oh, good work on me next. Or maybe get some more manpower. That would also be very good as well. Come on, get in there, get in there, get in there, get in there, get in there. The death of Konev. Oh, wow. Well, I'm very sorry to bother you, but I was told to bring you this. What is this about now, Zukov asked, turning to the soldier who had entered the office. I think it's about Konev, if I'm not mistaken, though. I didn't look at the contents of the letter. What does that messy bag of hair want from me now? I'm not sure. That's why I'm bringing you this. Then he handed him the letter so that Zukov could open it first, with a dose of caution because he knew that Konev could be a very detestable person. Or debatable person, really. Let's see what this Lodiedno boy has to say. Reading the letter word for word, he realized that he was reading the most beautiful thing in his life, something he thought he could only see once in his life, if it was about Beria or Zadanov, but no, this time Konev was involved. According to the report, Konev was arrested by his own men and taken to a firing squad where he was tried. Zukov knew that he should not laugh at someone else's misfortune, but this was stronger than himself. So he burst into such sweet laughter that an instant innocent observer would think he had just received a panic attack. Laughing as if he read the words of the letter, Zukov just said quietly, the cavalry finally finished him off. Nice. Coup in Romania, huh? Begin your assault there. Goring is game. Oh boy, the fat man is here, huh? Alright, let the infantry get up here. I also want to move the uh, tanks around too. Supplies are really bad around here. Coronation of Elizabeth II, not bad. Uh, we'll probably put it in the center here. Up here is really not good. Yeah, probably like right here ish. I'm going to push right here to get to Kim Robo. That is the goal. Oh, wow. Uh, and Muscovine. Uh, well, maybe if you're here, actually. You force it. Screw it, you're all going in. Go, go, go. Hmm. You guys hold, you guys move around as well. Losses, 14,000 versus 40,000, not bad so far. How, whoa, 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 how do we lose here? How do we lose here? That's my question. That makes no sense. Formation of Burgundy, alright. Makes it easy for you, I guess. Where are the tanks? Still moving around, looks like, just a little bit. How many divisions does this group have? My goodness. How, how do they get so much manpower? Gas pistons, get even more defense and soft attack, that'll be good. Good. The other tanks, there they are. Good. Let them go. Let them force it. Win that battle as fast as possible. They're going to suffer a lot of losses. I do not like fighting these guys at all. Alright. Oh, we're already on. Wait. We're on extensive conscription. Hold on. Well, we got to go search by requirement because we're running out of vampire just in case. Actually, my kingdom, that's fine. Right there. Would you go right here, too? You'll be fine if you do that. Um, you guys go there, too, that's fine. Find every division they have and beat the crap out of them. Good. Let's see what you can do about that. You try to encircle these guys if possible. If possible. He takes his own life, unfortunate. Even just for a little bit, just get in there, get in there. Come on, come oh come on, you piece of garbage. Force the attack. Crappy tank divisions. Crappy, 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 crappy tank divisions. My god. Alright, decryption, get some more encryption.
Jesus Christ, how much more do we need? Now go up here, come on. You should easily be able to take this tile. Easily, 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 easily. Come on. There you go. I'll take... Okay, we got him. Thank God. I was starting to get pissed off with this stupid, stupid war. Uh, that's good. Thank God. Stupid, stupid wars, man. All right, integrate compatible with the bureau members. Not everyone in the old Nova Soviet government directly conflicts with the Marshal's ideas, for they all share a mutual hatred of the corrupt government of Perm. Or bring some of these more like-minded individuals into our government. Followed up with, give me this one. Issue the Mar the motherland, huh? Attempt to locate Rokosovsky. Konstantin Rokosovsky was one of the Nova Soviet's finest generals, but now he remains at large. If all the states collapse, we will send an expedition to hopefully find Rokosovsky before he causes any serious damage to our plans. Which is good. It was all alone, feeling cold. The cold of Siberia creep under his skin as he desperately tried to hide from the people who were looking for him. Who demanded to see him alive or dead as befits Zukov's regime for several days in a row. He was on the move without any rest unless he stepped to drink some water and then proceeded with light. But sure steps in the direction of anything he might call salvation. He was hungry and thirsty after a long journey. He had no one to help him on his journey but only a steely will to survive in whatever lay he could. Or whatever way he could. And the waves were slowly disappearing. He felt the hopelessness of the situation pressing him more and more and suffocated him until he knelt before his pursuers, feeling their hands on his neck, throwing his him behind steel bars and chains. He dreamed of the freedom he could not have. He only had this current situation in which he found himself, and he did not see a possible way out of it. Rising somewhere in the middle of the night, switching from the nightmare in which he also saw the firing squads standing in front of him, Rokosovsky felt the cold sweat on his face pour over him. He looked around, and he saw the darkness that swallowed him, the road in front of him, and something that he kept repeating in himself, just to survive this night. Kill him off. Traitor. Absolute traitor. Traitors deserve no repentance here. Hopefully we can integrate these places though. That'd be good. Eventually. Of course. He escaped. Well, let's see what happens. 65% chance of him cap of us capturing him is not bad. Should have went to war economy before the other one, but whatever. I mean, we need manpower. Sometimes... It really sucks fighting in Russia, especially Siberia. Oh my goodness. How many more guns do we need? Oh, we're good on guns, actually. We're relatively good on guns, which means, for you guys... No, 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 no. I do... I hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. When the dads are like, you cannot switch out of this template. I hate it so much. Why? Why? I mean, this was not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's not terrible, but... Why? Why do you pain us so... Political factions, though. Zatsev versus Vyshinsky. Sniper clique. And the Plurinational Committee. Total control. Sniper faction. Kind of handsome. I guess see what happens next. Uh, just we can use these guys immediately. Or construction speed. Come on, close out of this. Um, oh, get that 50%. 50% is so nice. At least we're looking okay. Looking a little better. Fascist party, huh? Well... The birds of prey. A patrol was sent some time long ago to guard the local forest because a large number of gorillas were spotted there after the war. Notice a suspicious movement of an individual who appeared in front of them as a ghost looking for its new victim. In front of them was a walking corpse, which was not half of itself when, as when they first saw or heard about it. Rokosovsky found himself in a hopeless situation and fatigue overcame him. He couldn't react fast enough to dodge the impact of a rifle butt and blunt again, but then, again, the strong swing was more than enough to knock him to his ground. Grasping his hands and throwing him on the road to search him, discovered that he did not have any weapons, they began to grow up his pockets, but Rokosovsky did not even have the soul in him to be able to resist this. After the search, they lifted him to its feet and took him to the main part of the patrol to decide what to do with him. The decision was unanimous. Take this crap where it deserves to be. His solution. The Marshal's right. Konstantin Rokosovsky is a traitor to the Revolution and the Soviet Union. By kicking him alive, we risk polluting our movement to the point where we become no different than the scoundrels we've sworn to fight to our dying breath. Ending Rokosovsky's pathetic life is our only patriotic duty. Good. Purging the High Command, reintegrate the armies. Oh. Requires Zukov's solution. Okay, well, we don't have anything else here. Marshal's Red Army. Okay. More recruitable population factor. Nice. Very nice. Hopefully, we can integrate this place soon enough. Alright, you guys definitely need to train. And honestly, I don't want that last division. There you go. Nice. Britain sends victorious in Malaya. Good job, Britain. Good job, good job. Oh, also, I did forget about this, too. No wonder we were suffering from supply issues. That's partially my fault, but even then, it wasn't really that bad for us. In terms of supply, it's just combat sucks. So we don't have enough stuff here. Rokosovsky was merely the tip of the iceberg, as it turns out. Many of his former cronies are, as it turns out, traitors to the motherland as well. 
We must exercise these traitorous demons from a new government at once if we are to stay united going forward. Makes sense to me. Got almost done there in Irkutsk. 50% would be really nice though. Do we have this as a court? Do we have this? Well, we might have these as courts actually. Yeah, we really do. That's nice. The supply. We got a lot of supply points. Supply point. Supply point. Supply point. Country GDP. Oh, that's 20. It's not bad. Could be worse. Officials should condemn Zidanov's shining. Zidanov's point is doctrine has corrupted far too many innocent souls in our rule, and it's about time we put an end to that. With an official statement condemning the last lingering elements of Andrei Zedana's revisionist leadership, we can finally move forward as the United Nation. Claim the resources of the North. Siberia's ours. Oh, that'd be kind of fun. Changes the tree the National Unification Tree. Sounds like fun to me, man. Look at that manpower. Good, because my god, do we need it. So these guys are not bad. 17 combo is decent. Do we have anything else here? Guns. Some artillery. Logistics would be very helpful, but we're not even making support equipment because we don't have enough military factories. We have one. We've got a whole one. Go two, go two. Go two as well. Tanks are a little more important than that other stuff. And we don't have any planes. Six men, six guns. He felt the cold air flow through the rooms that led to the dungeon in which he was alone and miserable. Then he heard footsteps thundering like lightning from the sky and keys pounding on each other as they searched for the way to the lock. After a few movements of a hand that opened the door, dungeon door, he saw two shadows coming towards him. They lifted him from the cold concrete shadows coming towards him, or concrete on which he lay curled up with fatigue and took him out into the yard that was as empty as the most remote part of the world. But it still needed to be fulfilled, or at least fulfilled at least a little, just for someone to see what would happen. They straightened him up because he was constantly falling from fatigue to throw him against the wall. Six armed soldiers came out of the barracks and Zukov was personally in charge. Rokosovsky stood against the wall staring at the phenomenon that ordered him, brought here, and his life taken away. Six soldiers stood in a line while Zukov went a little further and watched his scene from the sidelines. He was thinking that at that moment. Images of earlier days, how they fought together for Russia, passed through his memory. Then he felt something pass through his heart, and an old friend was waiting. Three! He felt his head to shout, Stop, but he couldn't. Two! His hand switched to show that the situation was over, but that didn't help him now either. One! Do it! Do it once, Zukov said to himself, his mouth beginning to work. Fire! Stop! But this shot was mixed with the shots. They reached Rokosovsky, who was now on the ground with no signs of life. Zukov motioned to the soldiers that they could go, and as they went their way, Zukov approached Rokosovsky. He stood above him, tilting his head towards him, remembering everything the two of them had gone through during the war in Beria's reign. I'm sorry, Zukov said in a heavy voice, finally shedding a tear as the last glimmer of life in Rokosovsky's eyes disappeared. He was no more. Where do you want ghosts to reside? Followed up with. Re Reclaim the resources of Norilsk. The barren reaches of Noros contain everything we desperately need, manpower and resources. We must reclaim the strategically vital region of Siberia at once. Condemning Zidanov, it is finally time for that drunken dude to say goodbye to his toxic ideas that threaten to destroy political scene, to poison any future that a new and reformed Russia can bring. We succeeded in our goal, which was a set a long time ago, that it is to remove this man from the list of living people. We'll continue with our policy, we will not allow any revisionists to pollute the environment in which we find ourselves. And anyone who finds himself on the list of people who fit Zidanov's way of governing the state will be eliminated from the political system of, a gov of our state. Because only sober Russia is a strong Russia. So now we're going to go to war with Norilsk and then go to war and do Siberia's ours. The whole central Siberia is, once again, ours. It in no time, our government will successfully defeat the pretenders across the motherland. In which, after we can do this, and take out those other individuals, we will have a new tree. Which is kind of nice, actually. Pretty darn nice. As we're pretty much ready to go to war, we have 19 divisions, which is not bad. Just We're just missing a whole lot of stuff here. We tra we got trains. We got trains. We need more trucks. Hmm. Not bueno. Not really bueno, so. Rubric of conditions. That still wouldn't be too bad, but let's wait to get some war economy. Teaser resigns. Oh, that's unfortunate for him. But a little bit time for a little bit of conflict. <clears throat> These are militia divisions. Wow. Uh, literally only militia battalion. Okay, they died. Holy crap. That was fast. Um, I'm here with my cat Pinky now at the end of this video. Or the second, the last third of the video. Uh, yeah. All right, Pinky, doing okay? Cool. Not bad. Uh, let's see. Oh, I was thinking to go to war economy. God dang it, that sucks. All right, the Treaty of Honolulu. A new nation enters the stage. Alrighty. Hmm, I think it'd be best to wait. This one's pretty darn strong. Soviet railways are pretty, pretty darn strong arenas. Up next, though. Uh, reliability, soft attack, reliability. Hmm, reliability, soft attack isn't bad. It's okay. Planes? 
Should you bombing fighters? That's what you want to go with. So, range. Oh, that's not bad either. Let's go with that one though. Oh, God. More defense, organization, and soft attack. Yes, please. Seriously, we lost nobody. We killed off 1,200 people. Not bad. Would you like to go all the way up here and get, kill them all off? Of course you would. Of course you would. Hmm. Yes, research speed is very good too. Building up some roads, which is fine. You know what? I think with us doing this, I think I'll just finish this part off screen. We already read the focus anyway, so we might as well end the episode here and then we'll begin having pretty much most of Century Siberia under our state. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also see what else we'll have to do in our attempt to reunify Russia or the Soviet Union, really. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.